Hi, I am Dr. Sanjay Lunde. I am practicing orthopedic surgeon in the city of Mumbai. I have been practicing in Mumbai since last 15 years. Essentially, 90% of my practice is related to the knee joint. So, let us discuss something about the osteoarthritis. Now, in Indian scenario, what we observe is majority of our patients, the commonest joint affected is the knee joint followed by hip joint. Even though osteoarthritis also happens in the neck and in the back, resulting in cervical or lumbar spondylosis. Sometimes in certain unfortunate patients, it does affect small joints of the hand. Now, who are the patients who are usually affected? The, our traditional teaching and traditional observation was it used to affect people more than say 65 or 70 years of age. But again, with increasing obesity, lack of physical activities, actually in our clinical practice, now we are seeing patients in their 40s, say 45 or 48 years of age, they are also having and presenting with symptoms of osteoarthritis of the knee joint. Females, they are slightly more prone to develop osteoarthritis than males. Now what are the commonest symptoms with which the patients present? Pain while getting up from the sitting position or pain or crepitus or cracking noise happening in the knee when they climb up and down the stairs. That is the first symptom. Followed by that, then they develop some swelling of the knee. Uh, then when they walk for say about 15 to 20 minutes, then their knee joint pains and they have to stop. Very advanced disease, the patients will have deformity of the joint. Especially in Indian scenario, we have bow legs rather than knock knees. And then the, the patients typically walk with a, with a waddling gait, you know, typically they sway and walk, their walking speed decreases. So also the amount of time and the distance they can walk also becomes less. Now, I think majority of you will be more interested in how to prevent it or if you develop this particular disease, how you can arrest it so that you don't land up in uh, replacing the knee or getting your knee replaced. Mind you, uh, as an opening statement, I want to uh, emphasize on your mind, knee replacement is only done for a very severe and advanced arthritis. 90% of the patients, if they get diagnosed with the arthritis very early, the, they can prevent the further progression of this particular arthritis. Now, how that can be done? It is very easy. It's a basically a multifactorial and a multimodal approach. Essentially, first thing what they need to do is to lose weight. Because suppose if I am weighing say about 80 kg, 40 kg of my weight is going through each knee joint. Uh, maybe five, 5 hours or 7 hours a day when I am standing or walking or doing my activities. So weight reduction plays a very major role. Certain activity modification the patient needs to do like unnecessary squatting or climbing up and down the stairs the person should avoid. Instead, he should walk 10 to 15 minutes more. I always advise my patients that within the limits of pain, they must walk at least half an hour or if possible morning evening or at least half an hour at least once a day so that their joints will remain supple and mobile and they will not remain stiff. So in addition to weight reduction, a healthy diet is also extremely important. One should have a balanced diet which essentially should consist of calcium, vitamin D, vitamin C and alpha omega acids as well as uh, high fiber. Uh, certain physiotherapy exercises, especially the quadriceps muscle strengthening exercises. Quadriceps is a muscle which is there in front of the knee. The patient needs to go to the physiotherapist, learn the exercises and should do the exercises on her or on his own. What about the role of painkillers? Painkillers should be used very, very judiciously. Whenever there is a severe pain and inflammation and swelling of the joint, the patient may take the painkillers with the advice of the doctors along with some antacids. But mind you, only for about a week or a couple of weeks because continuous use of painkillers may damage the patient's kidney and liver. Fortunately, nowadays we have these uh, molecules which have two-fold action, which reduce the pain and inflammation. They have protective effect on the cartilage and most importantly, they can be given for a longer duration and they don't have side effects as the other traditional non steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs have. Now, which are these molecules? The first molecule of promise is glucosamine and chondroitin. It can be given for a longer duration and as I have explained, it reduces the pain and protects the cartilage. Second molecule which is of promise is our <coughs> age-old gugul, which is Salaki, Boswellia serrata, which also has a potent anti-inflammatory action and studies have shown that it is actually beneficial or it nourishes the chondrocytes, which is the main cell which produces the cartilage. 
and the third molecule which is of promise is our haldi which contains curcuma and it has a potent anti-inflammatory effect and the beauty of it these monetroceuticals as i have explained they can be given for a longer duration of time and they don't have any side effects surgery should be only reserved for a very advanced arthritis almost 90 percent of these patients they can be managed without any operative intervention if you follow regular diet if you follow regular exercises if you take these nutraceuticals which help to increase the coating to the cartilage and if you keep your weight under control uh, thank you